talk about women in technology. I think it's very crucial um, that women commit to utilization of computer engineering. I myself was actually someone who worked in the maritime industry, and this may come to a surprise to a lot of people. 2004, I joined the government of the UAE, but prior to that, from 1993 to year 2000, I worked with the Dubai Ports Authority under the chairmanship of Sultan bin Slayan. Um, uh, I worked at the technology department. I was responsible for building um, quite a lot of the uh, business uh, applications, so business uh, uh, development when it comes to uh, software. Um, that was very crucial to um, UAE because uh, um, uh, um, and for uh, to um, the Dubai and the Dubai ports because um, the performance of the port was uh, very uh, much reliant on throughput and expediting turnaround ships. So a lot of the applications we had was actually focusing on that um, by creating a lot of technology that would mobilize containers uh, off the ship. We did uh, one first of a kind software that deals with the automation of uh, um, the manifest on loose cargo, which was never done worldwide. It was only done in container ship. That application itself became a business case and a white paper at Harvard Business School for master's degree. Um, so um, these, this uh, shows that the, um, as a woman, it is, uh, uh, the, the technology in maritime is very, very important. Um, I actually consider working at Dubai Ports as one of the best jobs I've ever had. Um, you, you can see in real time, once you accomplish technology, um, that the performance uh, of the organization changes in terms of uh, mobilizing the, uh, the ships themselves and the containers. Um, at the same time, you can see uh, beside the throughput performance uh, increase, you can see the profit and the revenue of the organization increasing because of their dependence on technology. One of the prides I have is that when they moved worldwide uh, to managing international ports as well, um, that these, uh, these applications became uh, very important in a lot of the automation uh, overseas as well uh, in the ports that Dubai Ports manages. I think um, we've seen a lot of progress um, in uh, gender equality, but actually more than that in diversity and inclusion in business in the last 10 years. Um, there's a woman based out of the UK called Helena Morrissey, who wrote a very interesting book called It's a Good Time to Be a Girl. Um, Helena was one of the, the founders of the 30% movement, and the idea was to get 30% of um, board members, company board members, to be women. Um, when they did a survey, they showed that actually from an um, an optimization of company resources perspective and, and, a, and a, uh, for the best company performances, actually about 66% of boards should be women, roughly two thirds um, for, the, for the gender dynamic, but they, they wanted to work towards the 30% movement. And so she started this maybe 10, 15 years ago, and we've seen more and more companies adopting um, boards that have a more, more equal split between men and women. And um, I think now, if you look at the recent announcement by Goldman Sachs that they will not uh, support companies from an investment and an IPO perspective that don't have at least one woman on the board, you know, that, that's a big change. Go back uh, 10 years, um, you'd have seen hardly any women on boards in the, in the, in the, in the FTSE 500, um, Fortune, 500 uh, Fortune 500 company. So we've come a long way from a leadership perspective. I think um, one of the stats, um, so I'm, I'm a, a an entrepreneur, um, I have a, a company, a hybrid healthcare company for women. One of the things that um, we notice still very much is the lack of equality in terms of access to capital. So um, women, uh, about 13% of women in, or of, of capital that was secured in the UAE last year was secured by women-led businesses versus a 2% global average, but still significantly more men is, uh, more men, more money is given to male-led um, companies um, than women-led companies uh, without good justification. It's been proven statistically time after time that women will generate more revenue per dollar of investment than their male counterparts. 
So I think um, this is, there are a couple of things that sit at the, at the heart of this. Um, fundamentally, and the number one one is the um, lack of access to capital. So we're really, we're fortunate that um, there's a company here called Mindshift Capital that recently closed its first um, gender lens venture fund. So they uh, exclusively invest in women-led businesses. And I think the emergence of more um, companies like Mindshift um, that will that will force people to, to rethink their attitude towards women-led businesses is very important. Um, and again, there's a, um, there's a slight bias that sits just in the way that uh, questions are asked about uh, two women versus men um, I I in terms of um, securing capital investment into businesses. Um, it's been, again, proven that uh, a woman who is running a business and pitching for investment will tend to be asked questions that force her on the defensive much more than, or more so than her male counterparts. So an example would be, let's say I have a house. Um, uh, a defensive uh, question for that house would be, how are you going to secure it and safeguard it um, over the next three years? So then I would answer, well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get uh, a, an alarm system set in, I'm going to install cameras, and I'm going to make sure that there's someone on site at every time, and I, I will not advertise when I'm out of town, and um, and a. a, a positive question um, would be how are you going to increase the value of your property over the next three years and then you can talk about oh I'm going to put in a pool and I'm going to renovate the garage and I'm going to convert um, the loft and put in a loft extension and actually the two questions are asking the same thing um, how are you going to increase and protect the value of the, the asset that you have but one is a, is a very defensively put question and one is a much more positively put question and so women who are, are pitching for investment um, tend to be asked questions that force them on the defensive a lot more. Um, so it, I think un understanding these, these, um, these hidden biases that we have in terms of the way that we um, approach the, the gender balance is critical to continue our work um, in increasing equality in terms of opportunity, in terms of access over the next 10 years. So one of the most uh, exciting uh, insights that I received from the panel was uh, how they talked about the uh, statistics in the MENA region versus the UAE. Uh, we still have a long way to go. Uh, and uh, what uh, they have said about technology enabling uh, development at your own pace and uh, helping you achieve uh, regardless of your other, uh, let's say, family uh, commitments or others uh, was also interesting. Uh, now on uh, how to enable women uh, in the more enable enable women inclusion uh, in the industries. Uh, definitely, the government plays a big role. Uh, government initiatives are uh, great enablers, and uh, this is what uh, the panel has highlighted as well: seeing the difference between women uh, penetration in the governmental sectors versus the private sector. Uh, they've also talk, uh, talked about uh, setting quotas, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I've always been a non-believer in quotas, uh, but uh, through the panel I got insights that maybe quotas are required, especially in the private sector. Uh, however, this has to be accompanied by uh, specific uh, qualifications, so we don't just do the quota to fill the quota. It's a quota as an enabler, but in the end of the day, qualifications is what matters because women in the end of the day are capable as much as, one, as, as men are. So today, the Women in Tech um, Technology Forum that was organized with the Sarja Research and Innovation Technology Center and in collaboration with Women in Tech, which I'm very proud of. And the main, the main focus was really to open first a debate about the role and about the, um, the ecosystem of women in technology here in the Middle East. So not only in Sharjah, but in the whole of the region um, to see what are the challenges that we are facing today, what are the success stories, and how can we um, adjust the, the challenges so we can have um, women um, to be empowered in the region. Oh, I think that they have a huge um, impact and a very, very important role. Uh, not only because women empowerment for them is something that's really the core of their values, um, which I have experienced because um, we've partnered together and I have seen for real how much action they take place, um, they take on to really 
try and, 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 and bridge this gender gap in the whole region. And because they are pioneers of innovation and the driving force of innovation and research and technology, not only in Sharjah, but in the whole of the region, um, they are going to be the ones who are going to be rising women as well um, in empowering them in innovation. So they have a huge, huge role to play. And I'm very happy that they are really playing it and they are empowering women in this sense. Yeah, so the gender, uh, the impact of gender equality on global economy is going to be um, extremely positive. Not only gender equality, but also diversity as a whole. That means different nationalities, different cultures, different ethnicities, and also different social backgrounds. It's very important to bring in diversity to the table and for innovation. Creativity um, comes because we have different uh, mindsets, we have different um, ways of thinking. And that's um, creativity and innovation can only come with, the, with, different, with a, diverse, uh, a diverse team. So obviously diverse teams perform better they make more money and so the economy can only grow. So it's not only something that's so, um, socially and um, ethical, but it's also very, it's an economic um, advantage. Well, obviously I will speak to the pillars, to the um, SDGs that we mainly focus on for women in technology, which is in my sector. So one will be gender equality. We also work a lot in education, in entrepreneurship for women, social inclusion and science and research. So I think if um, those, these five SDGs, um, if we can have overall gender equality, um, more women empowerment in these and have more representation of, of women from all kinds of social backgrounds and all nationalities, I think we're going to be creating um, a society and a working force that's going to be much more successful and uh, performant. My message, my message would be today, um, let's empower each other. We're all on the same team. There are lots of um, women associations out there or networking things where they very focus on, oh, this is my network, this is yours. We have to think globally because I think impact, we can all make a change or make a difference individually, but it can never reach the full potential and unless we do it collectively. So we have to think to work together, to make impact together, to help each other, and to really um, help other women um, just next to us. We have to rise them, um, lift them up as we rise. And I think that when we empower each other, um, I think the global energy of sisterhood comes to life and we can really change the world and make magic.